Hello, this is Chris Hall and this is Hall's Variety Pack off the record. It is our fourth edition and the fourth time that we're talking about Doctor Who. Yes, in last week's edition I did say I'd try and come up with some kind of weird and wonderful Doctor Who-y, timey-wimey, wibbly-wobbly name for all this, but I've not had a chance to do that. I've been a little busy. should also point out that I've got a bit of a sore throat coming along. Last night I did some recording for the next video review and... I got a little bit angry during it. Not necessarily because of the content of the film that I was reviewing, though that didn't exactly help. I got rather angry, I started shouting and getting rather agitated, and well, my throat started to naggle me a bit. Then, of course, I had my little radio showy thing immediately after it, and you know how it is, I'm fairly worn out in my voice, so I'll try not to get too over emotional during this, or at least try not to. So, might as well start by giving a quick uh, synopsis of this week's story. I should point out as well here and now that this, epi this episode thingy, we look back at Doctor Who, there may be spoilers within it. I'll say that again, there may be spoilers within it. I'm saying this because, you know, you may be watching this YouTube channel -y thing that I've got. Maybe this isn't a playlist, maybe this is one of those YouTube cobbled together playlist of things because it has Doctor Who somewhere in it. You've been watching and listening to maybe the Doctor Who theme and suddenly you've got me yattering on in your ears and now you're suddenly panicking because you don't want that episode of Doctor Who spoiling. Well, guess what? I'm doing this so that it will not be spoiled. So there you are. If you don't want anything in this episode spoiled, then watch something else. There's probably a load of great videos done by wonderful people along there. There may well be loads of my videos which are extra wonderful and extra amazing, even if I do say so myself. Right, so enough fanning around. Basic plot synopsis of this week's episode is that the Doctor is being driven manic, but when is he never not, by the idea that everyone in human history at some point or another has experienced the same dream. So the Doctor decides to investigate this with the help of Clara, who has just had a fairly naff date with Mr Pink. He and, or rather she and the Doctor then travel back in time to a children's home in Gloucester where they meet Rupert and loads of spooky, weirdy things start happening. Will the Doctor figure out what it is that's causing these weirdy, spooky things or will he not? Um... As an episode as a whole, I found it to be alright. There wasn't anything about it, it was terribly offensively bad, there was no aspect of it that made me want to pull my hair out and punch myself in the face. But with that said, we really have to look at this in a little bit more critical and clarital light, even though I'm not sure clarital is indeed a word. Let's look at it in a critical way, shall we? So critically, it's a spooky episode of Doctor Who, it's a horror episode for all intents and purposes. How does it function as a piece of horror fiction? Well, personally, not that well. There's a lot of build-up within the story with very little payoff. It's like somebody uh, doing the build-up to a joke without ever doing the punchline. It's like having a... Uh, wanting to sneeze, but you can't sneeze. You've just got that tickling feeling at the back of your throat, except without the tickly feeling. It's just a load of build-up, 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 nothing. Or build-up, 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 nothing. Oh no, the Doctor's in trouble. Something happened off-screen. Woo! Which, yes, I'm sure that some of that stuff will be explained in the final episode. Maybe. But as a whole, as a horror kind of episode, considering that it's supposed to be this big, scary episode, it wasn't that scary at all, really. And it's not really helped by the fact that the blurb to this week's episode on the TV guide said something like, In this week's episode, the Doctor will meet what he truly fears! Which immediately sets the episode, entire episode down for a major fail, as far as I'm concerned. But it is annoying, though, that, because this... Nothing within it I found terribly scary. It's just a bunch of build. It's not like in the Paranormal Activity movies where you've got build, 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 bang! Build, 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 bang! Long, brief pause. Build up, build up, build up, bang! With this, it's just build up, build up, build up, build up, build up, build up, nothing. Build up, build up, build up, build up, build up, nothing. Which, really, I don't like because it means that the entire episode then just feels in service of really nothing to be honest bar say the ending which i'm not going to spoil because i'm probably going to save that and the cameo appearance from the first episode for some big final series synopsis thing but the thing that kind of really 
got me with this episode is that there's no real jeopardy to it. There's no stakes within it. It's not like, oh, this thing that the Doctor's investigating is some ancient nightmare demon thing like Freddy Krueger, or albeit a more BBC-friendly version of Freddy Krueger. No, it's just the Doctor's investigating this thing that everyone in humanity has apparently experienced. I've not. So, immediately then, I have no direct connection with it. I'm sure that if you have had a similar kind of dream to what the Doctor describes in this, you probably found it nail-bitingly terrifying. But for me, it was just a little bit... Okay, so I don't have connection to that, so maybe I've got connection to the monster, or whatever it is, if there even indeed there is a monster within it. Well, no, because we don't really see anything. Blah, say, a blurry shape in the background, and a bedsheet rising up in almost a comical goon show-esque way in a weird kind of way even though the goon shows radio so you wouldn't see anything but whatever a weird a, a bed sheet floats up and then it takes whatever's off it and then you see this blurred shape in the background so okay so it's either a child playing a prank or it's something else but it's never really explored what it could be and it's kind of implied that it could just be a figment of everybody's imagination so really what's going on what are the stakes in this there's no real oh this is a monster which is an evil thing that's been contaminating human minds and it's been using fear in order to re resurrect itself from the netherworld or something like that or this entity this strange entity is like some kind of mysterious star child kind of thing that's got lost and he's terrified that's why it's scaring everyone instead it's just effectively a red herring so that we can have a bit towards the end of the episode which personally i just found a bit troublesome like i say i'll probably go into greater detail about that specific thing towards the end of the series when i can have like a series rundown and review but still i don't honestly know what the purpose of this episode was particularly as it has no real link to the promised land story arc granted it's early days and there was no horribly clam fist clam fisted uh ham fisted i'm I'm hungry, I'm sorry. This horribly ham-fisted attempt to try and get it to fit into it, like we had in the Robin Hood episode, in which we had the TV screen that said the promised land as being the destination, even though it was supposed to be going to London. With this, things that I mentioned in the episode, even the weird shape that we see in the background at one point, may well be explored in the, towards the end of this series. It may be explored later in the next series. It may well be setting stuff up, but... For the time being, it's not really doing anything immediate. It's a horror episode which, for me, isn't scary. So it's an episode which explores very little and doesn't really achieve the horror aspect of it that I would otherwise like it to do. It just kind of feels as if the Doctor's having a bit of a breakdown and maybe he should go on holiday somewhere, like to Blackpool or... All right, he tried a holiday in Blackpool. That didn't work out for various reasons. But still... It's kind of a bit of a disappointment because I like the setup to this episode. The idea that the Doctor's exploring some strange part of human uh, subconscious because apparently this is a dream which we've all experienced it, apparently. I never have, but apparently everyone else in humanity has. So the idea of it being something like that, something that we apparently all have experienced, then is good because then we have some kind of immediate emotional connection with it, but we don't. So... It's an episode which is setting stuff up, potentially, for the end of the series, we hope. Otherwise, this episode then just kind of feels like a bit of filler. Which, yes, whether you can have Doctor Who episodes which are filler is something that you yourself you can discuss. But it kind of feels a little bit empty and superfluous to me, which is a shame because as a whole episode, I really liked it. I really liked being able to or at least trying to uh, work my way through this mystery to try and understand it and unravel it, even if it does seem like it's in service of something that either will not be explained till the end of the series or may never be explained. As a whole entity, yes, I enjoyed it. It is probably the best episode of this series and is probably one of the best episodes we had in a very long time. As a whole entity, it's kind of 50-50 between this and the Robin Hood episode, which one I like the best. But if you're looking at it as an entity, a horror entity, it doesn't really work for me. And I really do hope that certain things that are hinted at in this episode are actually going to be explored. Otherwise, once again, it'll just feel a little bit flat and empty.
In terms of performances, this is probably the best that Peter Capaldi has been as the Doctor. Although you can pretty much say that with any new episode that he's in now that this is the best he's ever done it. And that's probably due more to the fact that he's only just really started it. Though with that said, I thoroughly enjoyed his take on the Doctor. I really enjoyed this weird, manic, crazy, but also very dark character that he has. He has all the makings of being a great Doctor. And I really, really, really loved the exchanges between Mr. Pink and Clara. I found them this weird little date that they had together just be very, very brilliantly written. And he's probably one of the most real relationships and what one of the few really real exchanges that we've had in Doctor Who for me possibly ever it feels as if they are on a real date that has has gone wrong because they're both a little bit nervous and they're both saying the wrong things so though they still deep down really like each other and once again the actor playing mr pink and the other roles within this episode is really really good and i hope to see more of his character and i hope to see more of him and clara interacting with each other i really like them as a couple i think they make a sweet couple and I do hope that nothing bad happens to them in the course of Doctor Who. Because we know how that always turns out with characters who are in a relationship in Doctor Who. It never ends well. I hope it doesn't happen for two reasons. One, because I really like those characters. And two, because, well, I'd have seen it coming a mile off. Once again, like last week's episode, this is an episode which has no real major flaw. In fact, I dare say it is better than the previous week's episode as there is no one thing, no dumb moment within it which you kind of scratch your head at. Sure, it may not function that well as a horror thing for me, but as a whole story, it really, really worked. The relationships and the characters that are built within this episode are really, really fantastic. There is no, uh, uh, I've got ample air in my lungs bit or a tear down the cheek bit so everything within it functions perfectly well i dare say that you could use this as an example a standalone episode if you will to show people this is what doctor who is and this is what doctor who is about and you can also use it as a flagpole whenever we have a dumb episode of doctor who so we can say yes this episode we're watching may be crap but remember listen remember how great an episode that was because i really did like this episode apart from the fact i didn't find it scary in the slightest it was still interesting there was still some great characters I dare say that if it wasn't for the cast that we had, I'd probably just have shook my hands off at this and just kind of went, well, this is just filler. There's nothing to this episode that really, really connects with me. And I really hope that this is really the direction that Doctor Who's going to go in now. I think I said that in a couple, episodes, couple of these things before, when I said that I hope that Doctor Who really starts to slow down a bit now, that we don't have the Doctor running around pointing at things whilst going dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun in the background. I hope that that's not the case anymore, because this episode shows that it really isn't good. I've always said that that kind of approach for Doctor Who was always crap. People always scoffed and went, well, you don't know much about Doctor Who. But still, I really like this approach. I like it more measured. I like it a little bit more mature in that regard. Maybe the aspects of this episode did annoy me. Once again, the bit towards the end in the barn, I really didn't like. But the function of the episode, how it worked, how it engineered how it ran i really really liked and if the rest of the series can maintain this kind of approach to it then i really will enjoy this series and maybe by the end of it i'll start to consider stephen moffat to be a good writer again one of the reasons why i'm always so down on stephen moffat is because i know he can be a good writer he's produced some very great episodes for doctor who since he started writing them not only just in his time as the head writer but also those are guest episodes that he's done i know he can be great but there are episodes like the first episode in this series which was just plain bad i know he can do better i really want him to do better but when he doesn't that's when i get angry and annoyed it's it's like the disappointed parent kind of thing i suppose in some weird regard though whether or not the episode this series will maintain its very good mal-mannered very well measured pace is all debatable next week's episode is a effectively a bank heist episode that is a very weird gimmicky looking alien which has weird like i stalk things which kind of move about which may be practical effects i hope it's practical effects but it's probably going to be cgi where they're doing some kind of bank heist and if they don't do the bank heist they'll die or something 
And that does look like it'll be a running, pointing, dun 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 episode, which I really hope that it isn't, but we'll soon find out. I thought that this episode, honestly, was going to be crap, but with that said, I also thought that last week's episode was going to be crap, so it shows what I know from uh, first impressions. But I am looking forward to it. My faith in Doctor Who, for the meantime, has been reassured. It's very solid want of a better word and not trying to create some kind of innuendo. I believe strongly in Doctor Who at this point. I hope it will continue to the same level of fantasticness that it is. Last week I said I hope that next week's episode will be as good as this. This week's in many regards is better. Let's see if next week's episode will be as good as this one. It may not be but we'll soon see. But anyway what do you think dear viewer listener person if you agree with everything with i said what if if you do disagree with everything i've said if you want to ask me something or you want to raise a, a query or a point by all means put it in the comment section in whichever internet portal thing that this is in granted if this is in some kind of other alternate place than youtube there may not be videos in this kind of section to watch if you don't want the episode spoiled but it's a little late then for that because we are at the end of the episode so there's not really much else for me to do, so other than to say thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week!